Coming to you live from the shadow of the big house, it's IT for you. Tips and tricks on ITS tools, products, services, and more with your host, Gene Mackey. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to IT for You. I'm Gene Mackey, your host. And these are interactive webinars brought to you by Information and Technology Services. If you are having any audio or video problems during the webinar, let us know in the chat pod. And if it's not on our end, we can at least offer some troubleshooting tips. Uh, this page, and, and I also have this document, this PowerPoint, in the file share, but um, there's some. Uh, Links if you want to do mobile, mobile version of IT for you. Welcome to the IT for you collaboration series. So, you know, we do a lot of different tools. Sometimes we do business objects or M reports, but this whole series is about our new collaboration tools. Now that we have them, what the heck do we do with them? What powers do they give us? There's a link down here to the Next Gen Michigan page that has um, links to all the webinars in the collaboration series, and you don't have to log into my link. If you're a person with a disability who needs an accommodation to participate, just let us know. So today we've got Google Sites Part 2. We already had uh, Google Sites Part 1, and you all said, give us more. So Eric Fruth is here from ITS. Thank you, Jean. I am Eric Fruth. I'm with ITS, and I am in charge of the documentation and training for the collaboration services. That's M plus Google and M plus Box. <clears throat> so I do a lot with sites and I'm learning more every day. So I just wanted to share with you a few of the things that I think are pretty handy. I will show you two of the sites that I maintain. One is the M plus Google site and another one is a project that we have internal to ITS. I'll go through navigational tabs page level permissions where you can give access to individual pages that are different than the site itself, show you how to embed some things, and also the sidebar items and add an RSS feed. And this is highly demo, so I'm just going to jump into my sites and show you a few things now. <clears throat> so for navigational tabs, on the M plus Google site here, you can see at the top, we have links that are tabs that jump out to all of our collaboration services. I'll show you how you can add navigational tabs to highlight different pages on your site. So we already have our site built, right? We did that with part one. You've been working with it and exploring the possibilities with sites. If you go up to the more menu and go down to edit site layout, up at the top, you can see where we have our header and our sidebar. And the hor horizontal navigation is where you can get your tabs enabled. And now up the top, I've highlighted some news and announcements, project documents, an issues list, and action items. And if you click in here, you can actually move them around, add different ones. You can add URLs like we have on the M plus Google site, or add any other pages that you want to highlight on your site. There are different styles you can choose too. I like the boxes, but you can also just have regular tabs or just links. And I chose to have um, news and announcements and project documents as some of the key pages that I think my viewers are gonna wanna see and go to often. So it was pretty simple, but it's very helpful. I've gotten a lot of um, feedback that people really like to have the tabs up there. And now I'll go into page level permissions. I'll close the layout navigation. So we all know that we can set the site permissions at the top and you can give it to your group. You can give it to all of U of M or you can give edit access to individuals. So if we have that, we can go into enable page level permissions. So if, let's say I gave view access to my site to everybody at the university. 
But now my project team, I want to give them a little more access. I want to give them edit access. So I'll jump in here. You can see my site map on the left and the communication plan. I want them to be able to go in there and edit this on their own. So by default, it's going to go to the default for the site permissions, but you can change that here. And I'm going to use the custom permissions. And I'm going to add new users on this page. And so here is how I've kind of broken this off and given individual, I can edit individual access that's different from the site itself. Sometimes this can get a little confusing if you have to maintain and manage individual page level permissions, but if you're just going to have something set, you can set it up at first and then just let it maintain itself if you're not going to have to make a lot of changes to it. There was one site, I think it was this one actually, that was just getting kind of complicated and people kept telling me, um, I can't edit this page, I can't edit this page, how do I get into here? And so I just went up to the top here and I just turned off the page level permissions to give everybody edit access. So you can always turn it back off too. All right, and then I'll jump back in here. Okay, so um, next I'm gonna talk about how to embed some things in your site. The biggest wow factor I think that I've gotten is embedding video. So I'll jump back here to the M plus Google site and don't worry, I copied the M plus Google site. So anything I do here isn't gonna actually affect the real site in case you're out there. So up here at the top, what we do is we embed different, like a webinar of the week and a two minute tip. I rotate these out every week and it's actually YouTube that's embedded right into the site. So I can start to play it if I want. I can start to play the webinar if I want. And I can actually jump out into YouTube and watch them full screen. So how I did this is a gadget. So I'll go into edit this page and right here it's a Google Gadget. Gadgets are different elements that you can add to your site. They can be just about anything. There are some that are um, sponsored, so to speak, by Google, and there are other ones that the public makes. The public puts out gadgets and they go through Google's approval process, and then they're available for you. And what I will do, I'll show you this, and then I'll show you how you can edit and actually add the gadget. And this is all it is. It's just a simple iframe script that you can embed. The one key thing that I've learned, which is pretty important, I think, is this display width. I keep it at 100%. That way it's scalable for smaller screens and larger screens. Otherwise, if I set it to a certain width, it can kind of overlap on top of each other when you're resizing your screens. And then you can always preview your gadget and make sure that it's what you want it to be. Okay, I'll leave this page. Okay, so I'll edit this page and show you how to add a gadget. But first, you'd want to get your iframe script. So, I'll open a new tab, jump out to YouTube. Don't know what I'm going to find, I'm just going to search for something. And let's search for Google Apps. All right, let's take a look at this one. So how you get your iframe script, that's actually different than just the URL. It's actually going to embed it in your site. You can come down to Share. And there's the regular URL, but you can click on Embed. And that gives you the script. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. Eric, do you uh, pay much attention to video size when you're getting that embed script? Video size, I don't pay too much attention to because it's actually just feeding out to YouTube. And so all this embedded is just um, playing it from YouTube, just as you would jump out to YouTube itself. So you're just kind of embedding it and displaying it from your site. So I don't worry about size at all. 
Okay, so you, you can worry about placement and all that, but I'm just going to show you basically how to get that gadget. You go up to Insert at the upper left and go down to More Gadgets. The featured is um, the ones that are, so to speak, sponsored by Google. I'm just going to stay with that and type Embed. And here's the Embed gadget. It kind of tells you what it is, you know, and you just say, yes, select, I want this gadget. And all you do is paste in your script, your iframe that you copied from YouTube or wherever else you got your script. And down here, I want to make sure that I make this 100%. Then I'll preview it real quick. Okay, that's the right one. And click OK. Now it doesn't look like much right now because we're actually on the edit. I'll make sure I center it. You don't have to center it if you don't want to. I just think it makes it clean. And I'll go up to the top and save. And there it is. And make sure it plays all right and looks like it's good. And again, this is playing from YouTube. It's just streaming in. And that's how you embed a video. Another thing that I found really helpful is that you can embed Google Drive folders and Google Drive files. How I set up this site that we were looking at before, this is a project that we had going on at ITS. And we're using Google Drive heavily. We have a lot of files, presentations, spreadsheets. But I didn't want my viewers to have to jump out to Drive to view files. I wanted to keep everything within one site for project management. And so I created the project documents link on the left. And what I did here is I embedded the overall upgrade project folder into sites. So from here, it'll actually open up Drive and people can actually see the files that are there. I went a little bit further than that as well. Underneath there, I created the individual folders that are listed here. I gave them their own page so we can be in project management documents. And they can see the individual files here as well and they can open them. So you can create your folder structure, you can create individual files to embed as well. And this just kept everything in one place for people so they didn't have to jump back and forth. I've gotten a lot of good feedback from that. And how do we do that? Let's go up. I'll just add a new page here. Um, I'll call it IT for you. Oh, while we're here, I'll mention another thing. Under location, down at the bottom, a good rule of thumb or best practice within web creation is not to have everything on one layer. The default is to put everything at the top layer, all your new pages, but you can actually put them underneath other and kind of like structure it in a different site map. And so I'm going to put this one under project management documents because it is part of project management documents. The template I'm going to use is web page and create. Okay, so here I am. This is pretty basic. I'm going to jump up to insert. Over on the right is where I can insert a folder. And this just brings up all of my Google Drive folders. I know I have a lot. I'm going to have to sort through them. Um, let me just pick one here. I'll just pick this one. And select. I just, I haven't gotten too fancy with it. I'm just keeping the defaults. You can play around with sizes and all that. I haven't done that yet, though. And again, it just looks basically like our embedded video that we did before. I'm going to center it. 
and then I'll save. And there are the Google Drive files in my Google Drive folder. Another thing you can do is you can actually embed specific files on your page. Our project manager did this. If I can remember which page it is, I think it is this one. Yeah. So she actually uploaded and embedded the project charge file within our site. So people don't even have to click and jump out to a new page to view the file. It's right in our site here. I was pretty proud of her for doing that because I didn't show her how. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how we do that. I'm going to add another page here. And again, this is a copy of our project page. I didn't actually edit anything on it. And it for you. I'm going to put this as a sub page here. Keep the web page format. Create. All right, just as we embedded the folder, I'm going to go up to File. And I'll select Document. This brings up all of my Google Drive documents. I can use the search at the top if I know the specific name. But I'm just going to, let's see. I'll just put this in here, just as an example for you. And again, I like to keep things centered. And I'll save. And there is our IT business case template. So if you have key files that you want to share, maybe an agenda or meeting minutes from your project, or maybe not a project, you can embed them right in your site to keep everything in one location. I found it really helpful. All right, something else that I haven't used too much, but I thought it was pretty cool and I figured out how to do it. You can actually embed a Google group in your site as well. So let's say I am, where did I go? I want, yeah, I want to be here. I'm back on the M plus Google page, a copy of it. I'm going to add a new page. And this is going to be the collaboration forum. That's the one of the Google groups that I want to embed in my site here. I'm going to put it, let's just put it under mobile devices. I wouldn't really, but just as an example here. And create. All right, then up at the top, I'm going to go to my insert menu again. And go down to groups. I'm going to keep this at 100%. And oh, it wants a URL. So this is going by URL. So let me jump out and find that. Groups. Oh, that's right. There's a little workaround that we have with Google right now. Our link doesn't work, so we have to type it out. Groups.google.com. OK. And over here is the collaboration forum. I'll just come up here and grab this URL. Copy. And go into back into the M plus Google site where I was adding that group. Paste it in. Preview to make sure. And it's the Google group loading. OK. All right, there's my collaboration forum. So I'll click OK. Again, we have that wonderful gray box. That's just because we're in edit. Center it. Save. And now I have embedded the collaboration forum in my site. So this is actually out on the collaboration forum, but I'm just kind of viewing it and streaming it through my site. So everything's in one location. You can see I have the scroll bar that would be on the actual Google group. Yeah. 
So if you have a Google group, even though we don't yet have them enabled on the UMISH domain, but you can create one in the public domain like this and embed it in your site. All right, so I don't know how many people have looked into the side navigation bar on the left, but there are a few things you can do with that as well. One of the most popular things here is the quick links. So under here at our quick links, we have um, news, a migration archive and such. But on my other site, I've created links out to our production site, out to um, the new upgraded dev, and also out to our training site. And please ask me some questions. <laughs> because I don't know if I can keep talking for too long. So if you want to know anything, go ahead and ask. I might have looked into it. I might have tried something or I might not have, but at least we can get a running list. And if I don't know the answer, then it'll give me something to do later on and follow up with everyone. Tiffany says you're doing a good job. Very clear. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. That's good to hear. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So up at our more menu, we can go down to Edit Site Layout. And I'll come over to my sidebar. I already have it there, but let's pretend it's not there. Okay, so I'll add another section. Click on the plus. And the navigation is the typical one that we use. It shows your site navigation. You can also add a text box if you want to just add some information about your site. You can add that here too. And recent activity is another thing that you can add if you want to see what people have edited on your site, if somebody else has access to edit as well. Also the site owners, you can have a list of them. I haven't found that terribly um, beneficial to me yet, but it might be beneficial to some other sites. And I'm just going to add another navigation section. All right, so now it's down here. It's added it, nothing's in there yet. But I can click on it and change the name to maybe links. From here, I can add pages in my site if I want to navigate to them, or I can add a URL. So this would be m plus Google. Google.umich.edu. And OK. I can add more if I want. And umich.edu. OK. And I'll just throw in one of my pages here as well, just as an example for you. Let's say one out to meeting notes. And I'll move meeting notes up. OK. Now here they are over on the left. It's pretty simple to do. Um, people really like it. So what I've done with my project team, I've asked them, if you go out to another site pretty regularly, let me know and I'll add a link to it under Quick Links. And then I can close this. And I can jump out to these if I want. Like I can go out to M plus Google. So it keeps everything there for me. Helpful links that I have, all again in one location. It's one more benefit of Google Sites. OK. Oh, I'll show you something else while I'm in here with that sidebar. I'll go back into Edit Site Layout. Especially with this one here, this big navigation. What you can do is, if you want to have a sub page, you can move your link where you want it. And then you can just move it in. And so now you can see that the issues list is a subpage of change management, which is a subpage of project documents. So let's take a look at what that, what that actually looks like. Saving. 
Now there's another little arrow to expand open for change management. Oh, I'm still editing, that's why. Let me go back and close our layout. Okay, come on, work for me. Okay, let's... Oh, it's not gonna work for me. Let me reload. I found reloading helps. If anything isn't working quite right, just always reload your page. No, I'm hoping this will work. <laughs> there we go. So you can expand it open and you can see that my issues list again is under change management, which is under project documents. Then you can close them all. Okay, I was hoping I would spur some questions from you all, but as Jean pointed out, it's Monday morning, our favorite time of the week. <laughs> All right, so let's go into right are some of the um, default predetermined gadgets that you can add that Google thinks is most helpful. Presentations, forms, you can actually go down to video and embed a YouTube video which is a, just a different way than what I showed you with the iframe embedding. You can put a chat in as well if you want to chat from your site. Or you can jump out to more gadgets. And if you click on public, there's just a lot out here. I'm not even going to begin to know most of them. Uh, you can scroll through and take a look at what's out here see if there's anything you want to play around with. I really haven't played around with too much, but if you find anything helpful, please let me know. I'd be really interested to hear from you. You can also do an RSS reader. That's something, let me cancel out of here, I'll show you how we're using it. If I go back to M plus Google homepage, this here at the top, this is an RSS feed of M plus Google on Google Plus. So I'll jump out to Google Plus and I'll put some tips, tricks, updates, announcements, and such. And then it actually pulls into the M plus Google homepage here, anything that I post. I can scroll through and look at old ones. I can actually go in and look at them. It takes me out to Google Plus and look at the actual post that I made. Okay, one other thing that I want to show you is embedding a calendar. I've done this on both of my sites. I think I have it under additional resources. Yeah, down here at the bottom, I've embedded the collaboration training and event calendar. So you can see what's going on, what training options are available and all that. And over on my project site, I have embedded a calendar for our team to post when they're going to be out of the office or on vacation. We're also going to add in here our go live dates, some milestones and such, but we just got started with this. And how you do that, we'll add another page and I'll just call it calendar again. I'll leave this at the top level so it can tell it's different. All right, go up to insert and over on the right. Oh, it's up at the top. Hello, Monday morning calendar. Now I'm going to get a list of all of the Google calendars that I have made or that have been shared with me that I've access to. And let's have to pick one here. I'll pick one over conference rooms. Don't know why, it's an example. And again, I can set um, width and height. This one tells me to leave it empty for 100%. So it scales again, scalable. And save it. I'll move it to the center. I click save 
and there's one of our busy conference rooms. You can choose a week view, month, or even the agenda, the agenda view. I'll show you in action how we've used this one back on the M plus Google site. On the home page, that same calendar we were looking at with the collaboration training and events, we've embedded down here with an agenda view. So you can scroll through and see a list of all the events and training that are going on. So Eric, when you embed the calendar, can you choose a default view that it's the default as agenda? Oh, good question. Can we choose a default view when we embed this? Absolutely. Um, let me go up here to the edit. All right, click on my calendar. Down here to the little gear icon for properties. Now under view here is where I can select which one I want. You can have the month, the week, or the agenda. Cool. And down here under display options, you can actually give your viewers the option to change that if you want. Okay. I welcome your questions. <laughs> so please ask. And that's pretty much my list of things I had to show you today. So I'll wait around to hear some extra questions. Maybe we can explore some things together if you want to try something out. So Tiffany wants to know, can people add to the calendar right from the embedded view? That's a good question. I was hoping people would be able to add to the calendar from the embedded view, but unfortunately they're going to have to go out to the calendar itself. This view embedding and even the other calendar that we showed is just viewing the calendar. So it's kind of streaming into your site because the site really doesn't know who has access to that calendar and who can add to it. So you'd actually have to go through calendar to get that, that so all the permissions and everything are set up. Maybe eventually they'll figure out how to do it, which would be nice, but it kind of makes sense to me that anybody can view your site and the permissions are different. It's kind of how it makes I understand it at least. All right. Well, I'll go over some additional resources with you. The M plus Google site is a great place to bookmark, even set it as your home page. We have those links at the top that jump you out to all of the other collaboration services. We also have the Learning Center with videos, short videos to show you how to get around and do maybe some more expert things with collaboration. We post our updates and announcements, and we also have that training calendar that I showed you. Oh, a question, yes. Two questions. Yay! Uh, Karen wants to know, do you have any timeline on which Google Groups will be available in the UMICH domain? Ooh, a timeline for when Groups is gonna be available in the UMICH domain. I don't. The reason it's not enabled has to do with the um, the privacy of the groups in mCommunity. We had to set mCommunity to only show members to people that are members of that group. Because of that, we can't get that synced up to Google. So we'd have to turn that off so that Google can use groups as well. And then, you know, we get into the whole privacy thing with students and the reason we implemented that on M community itself. So I don't know when they're going to get that figured out. And Tiffany wonders, what's the biggest hurdle you've encountered while working with Google Sites? Ooh, the biggest hurdle I've encountered. Um, honestly, I, I would have to say it's that um, scaling of the embedded videos. That was something that uh, somebody else had to show me how to do because I wasn't too familiar with HTML code. And so I didn't know that that width had to be set to 100%. So I was setting my own widths and people were coming to me saying, this is overlapping. This is looking really bad. I know that's not a big thing, but so far that's the biggest hurdle I've had. So I also want to show you or mention the M plus box site. You don't want to forget about Box. It's more than just storage. You can really do a lot of collaboration with it. I won't go into it too much because this is about sites, but I just want to mention that to you. And also, if, we, if you're on Google+, follow M plus Google. I tried to send out tips and tricks every day 
as well as announcements, updates, or anything else. And also, the U of M Collaboration Forum, the Google Group. If you go out to Google Groups, look for U of M Collaboration Forum. That's more than just Google and Box. It's just, it's a community. It's a group that people talk back and forth. They have discussions about different things, ask for help on things. Oh, another question. So Aaron wants to know, other than re-watching this great presentation, where can I go for how-to on all of these tips? Like written resources would be great. Oh, excellent. And we can go to sites and other services. We have just a few things here on sites, but what I found is if I go out and I Google it, Google has a lot of information out there. So I have a new tab and, oops. I always put Google Apps. That's different than the public Google. That means it's, you know, like the UMish domain and other domains and sites. And just about anything you want to find, you can find. I mean, this is where I get a lot of the tips and tricks that I post every day on Google+. And also, if you go to YouTube and you search for Google app sites, there's a lot of videos out there as well. So I have a, a little bit of information here. I think I'm going to beef it up a bit more and see what else I can put on the site. But again, Googling it is the best way that I've found to get, get additional information. And the collaboration forum, we have a live event coming up on the 31st from 1 to 3. We're going to be at Palmer Commons and we're bringing the, the techies with us. So we're going to have the tech team from Box and the tech team from Google. There to just, it's going to be an open question and answer going to be focused on technical stuff, but if you have any questions at all, you can bring them and ask the technical people directly. Will it be live streamed? The Collaboration Forum live event will be live streamed. Yes, we'll send out communications about it and I'll post something on Google Plus with a link to the event page and it will be recorded as well. So if you can't get to Palmer Commons, you can join us remotely, absolutely. And <clears throat> any other questions, I'll hang out here for a little bit. But I do want to thank you for taking the time out to listen to me and learn a little bit more about Google Sites. There's just a lot you can do with it. Okay, I'll turn this back over to Jean. Again, thank you. And you can always contact for help if you want some more information. All right, thank you much, Eric. Stop sharing. Let me go back to my little PowerPoint here. Hello, okay, here I go. All right, so um, this is a link to Eric's presentation. You might have to like log in to the UMish domain and then paste it in. And I'm also just going to briefly bring up, um, huh? Well, it was supposed to be there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the M plus Google page on sites. And then uh, this is part two of Google Sites, and we had a part one. So there's uh, here's the link to the recording of part one in my link, and also the link to Nancy's outline. And recording of this session will be listed on the IT for You page in my link, and also there's a link to the Next Gen page where you don't have to log in. If you'd like to get announcements, if you're not on our IT for You email list, let us know. And if you have uh, other issues, as Eric said, you can contact the ITS Service Center.